Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Time for us to check out the big stories on our national dailies. And to make sense of all of this, we have Nick Agule, who is a public affairs analyst. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Nick Agule. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right, so uh, we'll start off uh, with the leadership newspaper this morning and find out what big stories are making the rounds on the leadership newspaper. Now, looking at the front page of the leadership newspaper, a very bold and interesting caption says, Abuja now home to abandon white elephant projects. Uh, that's on page four. Uh, this is uh, not new to the Nigerian scene. Uh, if you look across the entire country, you find out that there are several abandoned projects. Abuja now home to abandon white elephant project. It's boldly written on the leadership newspaper. You've got several riders. Uh, the first read, billions of Naira disbursed the contractors, but project rot away. And that's uh, the first rider. Government makes excuses for delays and abandonment. It's a national shame, says resident. Okay, so the, that's what you find on the leadership newspaper. Another uh, header says, investors besiege all companies' shares over rising crude prices. Uh, that's also on the top page of the leadership newspaper, on page five to be precise. You also find another uh, writer saying, budget office paid 28 billion naira to unnamed MDAs. Uh, that's what the Senate is saying. That's quite interesting. If you ask me, and that's on page 8 of the leadership newspaper. I visited EFCC on my own volution. Kwan Kwaso is quoted on page 4. Well, these are the stories we can uh, take on the leadership newspaper this morning. All right, moving on to the punch newspapers. APC parallel congresses. Amosun, Aribe Shola, Lai may lose out. Party back to governors. It's a practice to respect incumbent governors. They are party leaders, National Caucus member says. It says illegal congresses won't be recognized, and that's from the APC, as mass defection looms. Also, Presidency Fault Onu, NITR Consul, contest minister's dissolution order. NSCDC threatens operator's arrest, lists four deaths in Ondo boat accidents. Fleeing Lagos tax uh, force officers shoot banker for protesting car damage. Federal government personnel cost rises by 79.49%, gulps 13.2 trillion naira in four years. Also on the punch, Pandora Papers, EFCC opens probe of OB, Odua, NPA boss, and others. Nigerian Air Force denies paying 20 million naira to save Buhari's plane from bandits. And 750,000 metric tons supply gap, Forex shoot uh, cooking gas above uh, 8,000 naira. All right, let's check out the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Nigeria unattractive to lenders, investors, analysts is quoted. Nigeria unattractive to lenders and investors. It's on page four. One access for partial privatization is executed through capital market, asks federal government to issue asset-backed securities to connect global liquidity. All of that you find on page four. Senate uncovers how budget office paid 28 billion naira to unnamed MDAs. That's on page four. And Sarah drags Buhari to court over plan to monitor WhatsApp messages. It's also on page five. Still looking at uh, the front page of the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. 2022 budget. State house operation to gob over 200 billion naira in duplicated line items. Federal government to spend 21.97 billion naira on VP wing of state house clinic. Interesting. APC crisis reading congresses explain why Nigeria is in crisis. Uh, that's what you find on page five, and you have the PDP on that. And PDP, con con I take that again. PDP convention, Sekandar's vows to seek justice over his sack. Uh, that's on page five. Federal government and marks 20 billion naira for construction of Abuja Airport second runway. And you also find state congress, 
Sean Wall lose loyalist worry over rumored single term plot. Uh, that's also another interesting headline on page four of the Daily Independent newspaper. Now let's all can find out the nation. Big one there says Secundus Ayao deep in PDP pre convention crisis. Suspended chair won't withdraw case. Southeast chieftains reject governor's candidate for secretary. Um, Igbo is in the news also saying, I am not seeking funds for treatment. And uh, we can also find on the nation, Congress is not conducted by accredited officials, null and void, says the APC. Inside the uh, Akira Duluto Probe Congress, no other Congress outside the Shogbo Stadium. Also, why are your APC Congress collapsed and uh, others? We can also find on the nation this morning, Anambra 2021, rule out postponement of polls, says INEC. Uh, APC to hold rally in November 3rd. And um, Kogi uh, government to EFCC disclosed custodian of missing cash. Minister, railway paying back loans. It says government targets 6,000 kilometers uh, lines. And also Nigerian equities make 310 billion naira gain in global rally. I think those are the stories that we can share this morning. Um, good morning once again, Mr. Aguli. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much. All right. I want us to start with uh, one of the stories that we earlier spoke about, and that is the controversy concerning the Wall Street Journal's report that says the Nigerian government paid 20 million naira to bandits, about $50,000, um, to protect the president's plane, basically, from bandits. Uh, quickly share your thoughts on that one before we go on. My view on that story is that uh, the story sounds quite unlikely or unusual for an Air Force to do that. But in Nigeria, you never say never to anything. I mean, anything is possible. So... I am not privy to whatever would have happened between the Air Force and bandits in terms of any ransom that was demanded and paid to protect the president's plan. But in my mind, I believe that even if the Air Force paid bandits some money to protect the president's plan, some other measures must have been taken to protect the president's plan. Because you are dealing with bandits, and these are irrational human beings who may not even comply with agreements. So if you put the president's plan in the pathway or in the harm, in harm's way where the bandits are able to strike it, because you paid them 20 billion, I would say that was, that would be a very risky thing to do. Very risky thing to do. So, even if this story was true, I would say the Air Force must have taken steps to protect the president's plane, probably giving it a different flight path or ensuring that the air, the airspace on the flight path of the president's uh, plane is fully, fully secured before they will let the president, uh, the president go by that route. Okay, let's even assume that that story uh, is even true. I mean, let's go by the fact that if that story is true, what is the guarantee that this bandit will not, you know, use the money to purchase another one more sophisticated you know, to, to rather own it. I mean, if you're talking about 20 million uh, naira at this point in time, you want to ask what the value of that anti-aircraft uh, gone is. So what's the guarantee that they would not go back to get, you know, a better one and then come back, you know, to execute their intentions? Precisely. Like you have said, if the story, if we assume that the story is true. You pay money to the bandits, and they always remain bandits. So there is no guarantee 
that they won't use this money to go and buy more arms or even acquire more sophisticated anti-aircraft weapons. So that is one of the tragedies of negotiating with bandits and giving them money while they still remain bandits. If you are negotiating an amnesty deal with criminals, you ensure that they won't be able to go back to their criminality. Because if, if they are able to go back to their criminality with the money that you are giving them, then there are no guarantees. They can apply that money to anything. And that is why I said that if we take this story to be true, it will be very unprofessional and risky for the Air Force or the Nigerian government, knowing that bandits have the capability to shoot at and possibly bring down the president's plane, to put that plane in that flight path, even if ransom is paid. Because you can never tell what they're going to do. They are bandits, they are like animals. There are people who you have a dog, and the next day the dog is biting you. That is the way bandits operate. And I don't think they should be trusted to that point that after ransom is being paid, then they should even, not only the president's plan, put any plan at all in that flight path without first securing the ground all along that flight path. Well, Mr. Agule, um, I'm sure you've also, you would also remember not long ago the same bandits were alleged to have shot down an Nigerian Air Force uh, jet. So... Um, hopefully we get to you know see some clarity uh, from the story in the next couple of days and uh, understand better if this is true or false. Uh, but let's move away from there and talk about the APC Congresses. Um, it's reported that in many states across the Federation there were parallel Congresses. Um, there was violence reported also in many of these places. There's also on the point this morning, Amos Shun and Rigby Shola and Lai Mohammed have been mentioned as uh, saying to very, be very likely to lose out um, because they're... Uh, uh, party leaders and not necessarily governors, or, you know, and so they don't have any power of incumbency. So share your thoughts on the Congresses so far. Before I answer your question, uh, let us uh, say uh, one last thing on the last story that we took, that I have read a report, I don't know if it's authentic, but I read a report purported to have been issued by the Nigerian Air Force to debunk or deny the fact that they ever paid ransom to anybody to secure the flight path of the president's plan. Now, uh, going to the Congresses, uh, what I, I observed in the news on the APC Congresses is that almost all of them were carried out by consensus. So they had consensus candidates, and they didn't have to ballot. So they just had voice votes, and the candidates that uh, stood for the various positions were now returned on the post. I mean, if a party decides to do that, so long as it's in a democratic way, they have their right to do that. But my concern is, the APC, as a ruling party, is unable to conduct its own congresses. Congresses as a party. How then can we trust this party that they will deliver a national elections credit, creditably, fairly, and correctly? How can we trust them? Because uh, there is a case, is it Ogun State? There are two congresses in Ogun I think either Ogun or Oyo State, one of the old states. They had two congresses. In one of the congresses, there were shootings. And people had to run helter skelter. We're talking about party congresses. And the ruling party is on the to have internal democracy and conduct itself in a democratic way to deliver content. 
Then how can they deliver a national election? We should all be alarmed. Secondly, all the, the, the crisis up and down in the parties between governors and some other leaders of the party and other stakeholders. As Nigerians, we wish all this should be for the good of Nigeria. This should be for good governance. But unfortunately, it is not. These are personal fights, fighting for personal territory. So for us Nigerians, we would like to advise these party leaders. What we need is not a show of force. What we need is not a demonstration as to who is more powerful in your party. What we need is good governance, simple things. Give us water, give us electricity, give us schools, healthcare, roads, kind of basic things. Let your fight be for the purpose of delivery of good governance. That is what will interest us, and that is what is going to be for the good of this country. If party leaders are united in terms of delivery of good governance to Nigerians, I don't expect this crisis to be happening and down in all the parties. So this is the time that these guys should shoot their swords, should all think that we are working for the people of Nigeria and not for our own personal interest. So let us go and deliver good governance to them. Okay, let's quickly look at the leadership newspaper this morning and talk about the reports on abandoned projects and white elephant projects as reported uh, in the FCT. Now, what could be responsible? Because according to you know, the news, you have uh, resources have been released, like millions have been released, and these contractors are not doing the needful. So what could be responsible for this behavior? Something that is very important <clears throat> that needs to be addressed by the government without any further delay. When I'm in Nigeria, as I'm speaking to you now, I spent considerable amount of time here in Abuja. And like the Red say or the, the newspaper report really says, it's an eyesore in a country where we have a huge housing deficit. You have all sorts of properties at different stages of construction left abandoned in the capital city. And people don't have now these properties are either owned by it or they are owned by private individuals, be they uh, corporate bodies or, or or humans. The government must rise up and do something about this. And so I, I, I wonder, I wonder if those we elected into government just turn blind when they get into office. Because as they ride in their convoys around the city of Abuja, they cannot say they don't see these gigantic properties that have been standing there, some of them, I have been seeing them for more than 15 years since I have been coming to Abuja. There has been no progress to develop those properties, complete them, and let people start occupying them. So if we have people in government whose objective is to deliver welfare through good governance to Nigerians, there is no way they will allow these kind of huge properties to be unoccupied completed why Nigerians don't have housing. So I will say two things have to happen. For the properties that are owned by the government, the government must read the riot act to the contractors who collected monies and did not finish these projects. Instead they come and finish the projects and put these houses in uh, into use or the government begins to prosecute them. And prosecution means quickly a special court needs to be set, set up to try contractors who have taken money and have failed to deliver the housing project. So that 
when judgment is passed against them, the government can actually go after them, including the assets in the corporate entities that they are running in this country. So that we will try and finish this project for, for use. For the, for the properties that are owned by the private sector, be they corporate bodies or, or human, human uh, beings, the government equally needs to read a riot act to them. In fact, this is a situation where President Buhari himself, or through any of his ministers, can give a deadline to these people and say, look, you have this deadline. You either come and start work to complete these properties, or the government is taking over so that we can complete these properties and use them for public, public good. Some of these properties can be used as offices, they can be used as hospitals, they can be used as schools, they can be used for the public good. So I'll read the right out to them, say that it, it's so and so time. If you don't come and complete these properties, we are taking them over for the public good. I believe that this, this is the decisive action that government must take to stop this menace of seeing properties unoccupied Incidentally, some of them are actually finished, though. Some of the properties I see in Abuja are finished, but unoccupied. You know, like those who, who know Abuja well, if you are approaching Abuja from the airport, you have these two skyscrapers. They are the tallest buildings in Abuja. I think they are either on the Independence or Constitution Avenue, as you come from the stadium and you are approaching the city of Abuja. The tallest skyscrapers in Abuja, two of them, I have been seeing them in that completed state now for more than five years. Those are the kind of properties that government will read right out and the people, the owners don't come and finish them up and let them out to, for use. The government takes them over and turns them into either housing or any other um, All right, Mr. public Gule. use. All right, Mr. Gule, let's move back to the punch newspapers. Uh, top of the punch, it's talking about federal government's personnel cost rising by 79.48%. Uh, it says it gulps 13.2 trillion naira in four years. Uh, share your views on that also. Numbers look dirty. You see, when we hear these numbers, these numbers fail empirical test. How do I mean? In the federal civil service, people are retiring every day because even today, it will be the 60th birthday of a federal civil servant or the 35th anniversary of that civil servant's uh, beginning of work in the federal civil service. So people are leaving federal civil service every day. And the government is not replacing them. There is a ban on recruitment in the federal service. So mathematically, if you had a wage last year and this year, a good number of those who were on the wage, wage list have left and you have not recruited more people, how then can your wage be, be increasing? Even if you think about promotions and all of that, it shouldn't be an increase of nearly 80% as we're talking about. But you see, the Nigerian government body is like a voodoo. You don't understand how they get these numbers. And at the end of the day, there is no transparency in the administration of this budget. That is just the real thing. So, you know, we used to have what we call budget padding. Budget padding. It used to occupy national discourse. I still believe that budget padding is still with us. These people just put numbers. Numbers that you can't explain. And then this becomes the avenues we are, you know, uh, our commonwealth is filtered away. So those parts are dodgy, and I will expect the National Assembly to do a smart job of scrutinizing those numbers. They have to see evidence. They need to see breakdown, even down to understand why the wage bill from the previous year to this year, we increased by nearly 80% when the government is not recruiting new staff and people are leaving federal service every day through retirement or some other natural causes. All right. Um, Nikagule, um, we'll have to wrap up here. Thank you so much uh, for your time this morning. Um, of course, for starting up our week uh, with us, having your thoughts on these uh, stories out there.
wish you a great week uh, ahead. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Have a nice week yourselves. Thank you. All right, still, we'll also take a short break. When we come back, a little bit of history. We're going back as far as 1912 to tell you uh, something about the Mann Act. And right after that, our first major conversations for the show this morning.